What's up guys? Today we are at Green Gables in Prince Edward Island. It is a hot spot for tourists. We're right up by Cavendish Beach, which is a very popular spot for anyone traveling to PEI. We're gonna be playing the Blue Tees. It's about 6,400 yards. I got some friends and family with me and uh, let's tee it up and see how the round goes. Let's go. Okay, so it's been a while since I did a golf vlog where I talked to you guys through all of my shots. So that's what I'm planning to do today. I'm gonna walk you through my strategy, how I, a scratch golfer, thinks about playing a course. And this is a course I haven't played for a couple years, so it might give you guys good insight how I'll play a course that I'm not super familiar with. So now let's get into some strategy. Par five, first hole, it's a huge one, 540 yards. We're playing the blue tees, plays about 6,500 yards at sea level. And the strategy here is just to keep the ball in play. I haven't had a warm up. I'll be honest with you guys, our tee time was actually yesterday. <laughs> we got our days confused and they're just gonna sneak us out here. So having not hit any balls, I don't recommend that, but if we can keep it in play, we'll get warm on the course. Good. All right, so the tee ball just barely stayed in play. First swing, no warm up. So you can see it just stayed out of the trees. At least we got a look at the green. I always play at the golf watch. My golf watch says 230 front, 246 middle, 260 back, which is pretty deep. So now I have to decide, do I wanna hit my three iron? My three irons, maybe like my 225, maybe 230 club, or hit a hybrid, which is like 260. There's bunkers all the way around. I think what I'm probably gonna do is hit a three iron. That way if I'm short of the green, I'm just chipping up. So we'll try that. So that three iron was as good as I could hit it. Oh, by the way, everyone say hi to Brody. This is Brody. <laughs> He's helping out with the uh, camera today. He pumped his three wood. I think he might be good. My three iron, I hit that as good as I could. It was right on line. And if it didn't get there, again, I should just be chipping. And that was kind of our intention. So we'll get up there and see what we can do. Okay, so I did exactly what I thought I was gonna do. So I played my three iron just short of the green, which is perfect. Based on my lie, I'm actually gonna putt it. I haven't done any practice, including chipping today. So the last thing I wanna do is flub this chip. So at least if I putt it, I should be able to get inside that five foot window and have a look for par. Go hard. Okay, it looks like maybe I should have tried to chip that because that was a horrible putt attempt. I don't even know what to explain there other than I just didn't hit it hard enough. We'll take a par, but birdie was definitely in reach. Oh well, no warm up. We'll, uh, I think the next hole is a par four and then a par five, so let's go there. So this course, Green Gables, is tree-lined galore. For me, that's not playing to my strengths. My driver will leak often. So I'm gonna be hitting a lot more hybrids and long irons just to keep the ball in play. It's one of the things to consider when you are playing tree-lined courses is if you keep the ball in play, you're gonna be scoring a lot better because you won't have as many you know, doubles and bogeys and maybe triples. This hole's only 305 yards. It's gonna be a long iron or a hybrid. When I golf, I always have a range finder with me. This is the Blue T Series 3 Max. It's been awesome so far. And I actually have a discount code that if any of you guys need a range finder, or I'll put the link in the description and you guys can save some money if you need a range finder. Highly recommend the Blue Tees. So this hole here, we have about 70 yards left. Just missed the fairway, which is a bummer. Oh well. The pin is playing 75 yards. So if I can get something in the air, 70-ish, I got a pretty square look at the green. I don't really have to go over any bunkers. So that's the plan and hopefully we'll have a birdie putt. This has been raining pretty steady all week. You can totally tell in the rough that that was a super heavy, super chunky wedge. Got lucky enough that it is on the green, but it didn't get as lucky a kick as my playing partner who chunked the absolute shit out of his and has a tap in birdie. So we have a putt, that's all we could ask for. And if we can go par par through two, it's not bad either. Really thought I had that birdie putt. I was walking it in. 
<laughs> just turn at the last second. Tap and par will take it even through two. All right, we've got another par five here, and this is my type of par five. It's open left, so I can go as far left as I want to avoid that right miss. And again, that's the intent, is just to keep the ball in play on these par fives. Okay, I went against my plan and we lost the ball down the tree line. Got 200, 190 at it. So we can, in theory, still make par, but it's looking like something higher. So 190 at it. So this is why it's so important for me to keep my ball in play. I now have this for par. 25 footer for par when it should be eagle. Bad course management. We'll see uh, Thanks, man. Tell we your just friend. put a band-aid on what is this hole. Okay. Go, go. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Again, that would have been a tap and birdie if I just kept the ball in play. So frustrating, but it's early enough in the round to try to correct that big slice drive. So this one I missed a little to the right, but it's still in play. I only have about 100 yards at it, so that will be just a, kind of a stock 58 degree. For a stock 58 degree, that was such a bad swing. I'm just on the uh, skirt or on the curtain putting, but for having just a wedge in, that was horrendous. Par would be a good score considering where I left myself. I couldn't have left myself in a worse spot because in line with the pin is a huge hill. Right over here, everything is sloping right towards the pin. So I have to either be up here and have it fall down. Cause I know if I go right at the pin, Everything's going this way, so not a good luck to save bar. Oh, hit it. Oh. Good cut. Very nice. Oh wow, nice shot, go in, go in. Oh, nice shot. <laughs> okay, par three downhill, could have hit a luckier shot. Had no idea what the wind was doing, just grabbed the longer club, hope for the best, swung, and we got a realistic look at birdie here. So it'd be nice if we can do something. So far it's been a great day, the rain has held off. If you guys are considering a golf vacation of PEI, book it now. This island is booked up like crazy and it's so hard to get rental cars and accommodations, but it's, it's worth the trip. So you should definitely look into a trip to PEI. Gonna have to wait another day for the hole in one on camera. Yeah. Nice bird. Nice bird. Some fireball? Fireball. <laughs> fireball. Okay, thrilled to make a birdie there. Now we got a par four. 332 yards, tight. So I'm gonna hit that hybrid, I think. Have a longer one in, but at least I can keep the ball in play. If you guys are keeping track on the score, we're one under. Let's go. All right, we had an instant PBFU, a per post birdie fuck up. I said I was gonna hit my hybrid, but the hole is so long that I need a driver. And I've been missing it like crazy. And this happens to me often on the course. And I know exactly what's wrong is my shoulders are wide open and I'm swinging across the ball. And I was doing that because I have been hitting this slice. Had I hit it straight, it would have gone trees left. So gotta hone that in and we're gonna be dropping. Didn't find my ball in the trees, but I found two Pro V, so we'll call that a win. The wind is really starting to pick up, and wind is so detrimental to my golf game. I suck in the wind, and I hate it. I'm sure a lot of you two hate playing in the wind. Bummer. Doubles in play. Oh, 
Nice. Yeah. I should have said double. Why did I say double? <laughs> okay, short par four. We're gonna try to put our hybrid back in play. Seeing as it's usually my safe club. We just gotta find the fairway. That's all we gotta do. How easy is that? Pick it over? Oh. It looked really good. Clearly hooked the absolute shit out of that hybrid. Had to hit a little punch stinger from 140 yards. The goal there was just to get it by the green that I'm hoping I can rely on my short game to salvage a par, but another poor tee shot led me to a poor approach. I might have hit the absolute best shot of my life. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> How did I do that? Okay, let's replay that shot. I was under those trees. Had to get over this bunker to the pin. Are you freaking kidding me? Let's go. 15 footer for bird from that lie with that tee shot. It's just how we planned it. All world par, gotta be lucky. The fact that I had a birdie putt is borderline criminal. Uh, we got a par three now. This par three is playing 185 and it's been so windy all day and it's been swirling. It hasn't been like a consistent one way or the other that doesn't feel like it anyway. So it might be like 185 playing 215. I guess we'll find out. So the good news is we're putting. The bad news is it's all the way down there. Par. Pars are underrated. I'd take 18 of them. Let's go. All right, we've got a long par four here, the ninth hole. And I've been losing my driver to the right and you can't miss right here. So I've opted to hit my hybrid and just have a long second shot in. So I need to keep the ball in play here and driver's just not working. So see what hybrid does. Stay up. Okay, so I was planning to film the back nine, but my golf started to go to shit and filming by yourself is actually quite difficult, so I couldn't film the back nine. Overall, though, Green Gables was awesome. I highly recommend it if you plan to travel to Prince Edward Island. Thanks to Golf PEI for working us up. We'll check in with you guys next time. See you later.